inspired, very much inspired by Victoria Yards and the opportunities that it offered. Um, and the first time I was brought here, I saw things that I thought really needed being done. Um, one of those was um, we had to focus on all the um, what's normally used for cars to park. The gardens uh, turned into vegetable gardens and food, um, and you know, resuscitate the soils to make it all kind of happen. Um, the second thing um, that I saw was the, all of the fantastic studio opportunities and space that um, we needed to fill with, fill with artisans, photographers, etc. Um, all vocational um, training skills had been taken away from the curriculum in South African schools, and I thought it would be a great opportunity to um, get artisans into an environment, almost an ecosystem of, of, um, of artisans, um, and just by them all being around, they could show people that this is a real viable way of making cash. And then the third thing was um, to uh, get involved with the community in whatever way we possibly could, so that we could sustain ourselves in the long term and, um, and that the community could benefit from us being here. When, when I got here, um, the place had been badly neglected and abused and uh, it was filled with um, informal panel beating shops, we call them chop shops in South Africa, and it was a disaster. It was an absolute mess. There had been no regard for um, the soils, the dry... It, it was just... Every, whenever somebody worked on a car, they'd take all the rubbish from the car and pile it into a corner and the rubbish would just pile up. And you, you almost need to see photographs to understand how bad it really was. Um, and um, so that was it. And kind of one of the things we do is we see through the rubbish, literally, and we see the possibilities that exist on the other side. The, f the, f the first stage was getting through the first seven months of negotiation with, with the current owner who wanted to turn it into 500 um, low-cost housing units, which I thought would have just extended the slum onto the site. So it took a lot of, uh, knowing, knowing our partner, it took a lot of sensitive negotiation and we got to the point where he had agreed to come on board. Um, by that time, we had, um, we had found a third lot of partners, so there are three lots of partners, and the third lot of partners are from very significant South African family-owned businesses, and they are kind of in love with South Africa and, it's pro and progressing South Africa. So we were very lucky to have the, these three kind of the three parties that made up um, what is now Victoria Yard. So I looked at the project for the first time in early 2016. Um, by October 2016, we started, and we identified a part of the site that had no um, tenants, and um, all of the tenants we did have were on very short leases. So we gave them ample time to kind of relocate, find other places while we got on with our kind of knitting on the, on the river kind of side part of the project. And uh, we, we built and we just built and kind of fixed the studios that were available. Um, and from the very beginning, I think that one of the first things I did was start collecting organic material. So uh, mulch and wood and anything that was kind of being chucked away. I love I'm a bit of a hoarder. So we collected all of that. And as we got on with it, the mulch was kind of um, turning into something better. We added all kinds of um, uh, kind of um, things to it, like bokashi and vermicol, you know, um, worm food, and to, to turn it into something because the soil here was destroyed. Really, in 2017 October, Simon Mason walked onto the site and he told me what he was doing. Um, he's doctored in active urban change making and the good life. And he was kind of the, the catalyst that um, that made uh, that was kind of the accelerator to what Victoria Yards is and is becoming. And he, um, we gave him 100 square meters, which constitutes less than a percentage, one percent of our gross total area. And um, what that that what that what that has allowed is for me to carry on with our business in this office, which is renting our square meters and enabling them to get on with their business, which has just been phenomenal. At the start of this project, the, um, the physical condition of the stuff above the ground was appalling, but 
the stuff that was below the ground was even worse. And so it, it really needed the re-engineering of every bit of service uh, on the site. Uh, there were no electrical connections, there were no water connections, all the sewer, uh, sewers were destroyed and there was no stormwater system either. So it was, it was re-engineering everything um, from scratch and, and doing it uh, in, in uh, historical buildings, which is, which is not that easy because you, you can't just go and dig trenches wherever you feel like. Uh, so it's been, it's been challenging and we've been doing it uh, little by little. So it's got to be a, a kind of an organic growth. And uh, so we've, we've managed to do most of the, the sewer and the water and we're about to now do the, the electrics. Well, we've, we've relayed all the, all the mains and uh, the water, we've, we've uh, got a borehole. In fact, we've got a couple of boreholes here and we've found the best one. And um, we have a large uh, uh, water tank and we've had the water tested originally and then we get it retested about every yeah. six weeks. Yeah. And, it's, and we put loads of filters and things in so and it's, the water is actually great. We're, we're about what, 800 meters from the source of the, of the river. I think, I think there was always a desire to, to um, be more eco-friendly than simply taking chlorinated municipal water and pouring it into the ground here. We, we really we really needed to to um, try and make use of what is here rather than than just import everything.